Just like that, in a flash, Tropical Depression 7 forming in the Atlantic, expected to become our sixth name storm of the season as it treks westward across the Atlantic. But where exactly is it going to head? We've got a trio of meteorologists on standby to answer your questions. Look at the latest models here on Track in the Tropics. Hey there, folks. JB here with you in your hurricane headquarters alongside, as always, Jeff Berardelli, Rebecca Barry on the bottom of your screen, and our Featured meteorologist today, Scott Roberts, joining us from WSAV. There in the top right-hand portion of your screen. You see all the hashtags around. We're going to answer your questions here momentarily about Tropical Depression 7, everything you need to know about the tropics. But first, let's send it over to the wall for Jeff Berardelli to talk about what we're looking at here on Tropical Satellite. And it was just earlier today, we got TD7, Jeff. Yeah, just before the 11 o'clock hour, we uh, have a new Tropical Depression to track. You can see it right there. And... Uh, as of right now, not very organized. Uh, it's really kind of lopsided. It's dealing with a little bit of dry air and also some wind shear at the current time. And we don't expect this to rapidly intensify. Conditions in the Atlantic now and pretty much all season up to this point have been very hostile for development. It was questionable whether or not this would even be able to develop, but here it is. It has um, successfully pushed some of the dry air out of its envelope, and I'm gonna show you that coming up in a couple of seconds. Here it is actually. So if you take a look, there is a lot of dry air surrounding it right there and, and right there, but there's a moist envelope around it, so it was able to form. However, I'll call your attention to the fact that most of the thunderstorms are skewed to the eastern side. Now, we have some decent outflow, but there's not too many storms on this side. You can see an absence right there. So this is still not a very well-organized system, which is why it's a tropical depression and not yet a tropical storm. But I don't think dry air is going to be an issue here. Again, it's been able to carve out a, a moist enough environment to form. So the question after this is, is the wind shear relentless or, or does it let up enough to allow this system to get better organized? So you can see this big, big, a big blow up of thunderstorms over the past hour, hour and a half, right on top of the center of circulation right there. But the majority of the clouds and the storms are on the eastern side. So again, uh, as of right now, still a, a fairly weak system. That's the official forecast track from the National Hurricane Center making it a tropical storm sometime overnight into tomorrow, and then tracking it westward. Now notice, they never bring the storm past 45 miles an hour. The reason why, at first at least, is wind shear. And then, when it gets into the greater Antilles, so first it'll, it'll hit Puerto Rico or near Puerto Rico, and then towards Haiti and the Dominican Republic, you can see that it weakens. Why does it weaken? It's not just wind shear, it's starting to deal with the high terrain of Hispaniola. So it has a lot to deal with, this system, and the National Hurricane Center forecast reflects the fact that it has a lot to deal with by, by weakening the system or not really strengthening it very much. This is a look at the spaghetti models, and you can see all the spaghetti models, so all the models agree that it's going to go basically straight west until it gets to about Haiti and the Dominican Republic, and then some of the models take it north, a couple of the models continue it west, and some of the hurricane models actually just kind of dissipate the system down down to the south. So at this point, it is too early to tell where this is going to go. A lot of our what we call global models, like the European and the American model, the GFS, actually do hook it out to sea uh, because we have a trough of low pressure across the state of Florida right now, which catches it. And I'm going to show you that too. But the Canadian model shows that it, it could very well, and you could see the sea the models right here, pushes it to the west towards the state of Florida and somewhat into the Gulf of Mexico too. So it remains to be seen exactly what's going to happen here. We're having a problem with the clicker for now. We'll yeah. see if we can get that. We can see if we can get that advanced. Oh, wait, we got it. We got it. All right, good, good. For now, it's working. So what I wanted to do is overlay. So this is this is the depression right here, overlaying wind shear. And you can see that it's dealing with some pretty decent wind shear on its northern side, which is why we don't expect that it's going to get necessarily much stronger. And the whole time, it's dealing with a lot of wind shear on its northern side. And then, even if the wind shear lightens up, it has to deal with the island's themselves. And so it's questionable as to whether or not uh, this is going to be able to strengthen much more. And then I'm probably going to end up leaving with this so we can we can get to the conversation here between all the meteorologists. But so this is the reason why the computer models, at least the, the uh, American model and, and the European model, are, are kind of hooking this to the northeast because there is a dip in the jet stream and a little trough of low pressure along the eastern seaboard. But what's going to be happening after that, and this, by the way, is, is early next week. So this is by about Monday or so. What's going to happen after that is the trough is eventually going to lift towards the end of next week. So if this ends up being a weak system, which it, if it does start to dissipate or just become an open tropical wave, it'll probably just continue moving west. And then after that, 
The area of high pressure, a big heat dome, is going to be building across the U.S. and extending its reach over the state of Florida. So if it were to get past Haiti and the Dominican Republic because it were to weaken or become an open wave, then we'd see it move in this direction. So I wouldn't be too confident just yet that this is going to hook out to sea. All right, with all that said, this is a look here at the European. And, JB, I'm going to walk back to the desk as I show this, and then we're going to get the conversation going. So that's a look right there at... at Tropical Depression number seven, and this is the European model, hooking it northeast to the Bahamas and out to sea. But there is something behind it, potentially. That's at least what the European model is showing. So even if seven were to hook out to sea, we'd still probably have something to watch after it. This is the GFS model, which is the American model. And you can see it moving basically to the west-northwest. But similar to the European model, it then hooks to the north and to the east of the Bahamas and ends up leaving us uh, high and dry here in Florida. But actually, the GFS, if, if I play that even further, uh, it ends up bringing the storm towards New England. <laughs> but, you know, it, that's a long time from now, and it, it remains to be seen if, if any of that is going to happen. But I think Scott would agree and, and, and Rebecca would agree that it is way too early uh, to Absolutely. call this one. Scott, what do you think about the model so far with TD7? Well, so far, uh, you know, w watching things over the past couple of days and seeing the latest runs throughout today, I think the uh, Hurricane Center has the right idea uh, that it is going to continue to move westward and that we really don't have much of an idea of the exact path beyond that five-day forecast, uh, simply because it's going to de determine on, on how, how it interacts with the land. If it just takes us that, that slightly southern track along, uh, say, south of Puerto Rico and south of Española, that could be something to watch out for just because of that slightly less land interaction there. But uh, with everything being in agreement, that's going to be right over those high mountains, 10, 15,000 foot mountains that that will really have a large impact on the storm as far as tearing it apart and really limiting uh, how it would even be able to maintain strength. So that's some good news there. But with all that moisture still moving to the west, whenever we have a situation like that, obviously during hurricane season, it's something that we should keep an eye on and will be keeping an eye on over the next uh, week or more. Scott joining us to our north in Savannah, Georgia at WSAV. You see the hashtags all around your screen, folks. Let's start to get to your questions out of the Facebook Live comment section. If you've been with us here on the program before, you know how it works. Use a hashtag, anyone on your screen, ask a question. We'll begin here with uh, Shelly from the WFLA Facebook page. Hashtag HJB. Hey, is, it, is it coming to St. Petersburg? And, and Rebecca, I think before we can pinpoint what city it might hit, we're talking about what region of our hemisphere that this might hit. Is, is Florida in play at all here? There are a couple of scenarios that show maybe the east coast of Florida could be in play, depending on the positioning of that high pressure that Jeff was showing you. And of course, when you're looking at these spaghetti models, your eyes go straight to those lighter white lines that do bring it closer to the west coast of Florida. And so there is a, a small possibility. It's not likely at this point, but it is still way too soon to tell. My favorite quote that whenever there's a system like this out there and it's just way too soon to tell is all bets are off until it's over Hispaniola because the mountain range is there, the different dynamics into play a lot of systems cross that island and come out a completely different scenario than what was leading up to it we talk about it all the time on track in the tropics land interaction and the impact that it has on a storm as it's strengthening or maintaining its strength uh, we got a couple of questions here for uh, for our entire team and the big one here with this one and we'll go back to back with these two is when when could this actually reach us if it does hashtag hey jeff from cindy and daniel castano uh when is it due to hit florida and then J Jelani is asking the question that's really on everyone's mind. Uh, hashtag, hey, Rebecca, will it impact the Jaguars or Buccaneers football games? Of course, talking about this weekend. This Aubrey, weekend. Right? Yes. Okay. This Well, uh, there's a, I guess there's a chance for the following week. Well, it depends. What's the timeline for the storm? Well, so first of all, the National Hurricane Center puts it over uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic on Monday. Right. So it's it's a long ways away. It's certainly not going to affect anyone this weekend. I don't know exactly which Jaguars and Bucks games uh, that we're talking about here, uh, but the weekend after. So uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, so at five days, it would be around Haiti and the Republic. So it would probably be towards the end of next week if it were to come uh, into or near Florida. But again, that's a big, big if right now. As Rebecca mentioned, as Scott mentioned, once it gets over those huge mountains in Haiti, the Dominican Republic, it could dissipate. If it were to dissipate or weaken, it would probably just continue to drift westward. The European model and the, uh, and the American model with those turns to the north are based on 
the, the possibility of it maintaining its integrity as a tropical storm, in which case it would probably hook a little further north and, and catch that trough of low pressure, that dip in the jet stream I showed you. But as Scott mentioned, you know, once you have an open wave like that or moisture moving westward, well, the track completely changes. If it didn't catch its ride to the north, now it's going west into a completely different environment that exists in the Western Caribbean or in the Gulf of Mexico or near the state of Florida. So, uh, you know, when it comes to these systems, I learned a long time ago, when a storm is cutting straight across the islands like that, even if all the models are going that way, I don't count it out. Right. And then once it does uh, move further to the west, say, say it does track, you know, say to south of Cuba and then eventually to the Gulf of Mexico, which would certainly be a scenario at that point, you have to watch out with all the fuel that we have with the above normal uh, uh, Gulf water temperatures that it wouldn't take much for a system like that to kind of get reignited and get going again. So there again, something that we'd have to keep an eye on, say, uh, beyond the five day forecast, say, you know, a week and a half out or so. We've been really focused, you guys, on TD7, but this next question, of course, talking about if there's anything else out there, I'll send this Rebecca's way, uh, Rebecca's way. Brody, hashtag hey, Rebecca, is the wave train starting to crank up? We are now in the busiest month of hurricane season, the month, of course, being September. So is there anything else that we're watching uh, in the Atlantic at this time, Rebecca? And so the European does show a, that, that second, basically what we talk about the wave train, you know, that first system kicks you off and then you could just got lows after lows after lows starting to make their way across the Atlantic. And the European does show that, that question mark there in the corner of your screen. If you wait until the very end, you can see it uh, emerging over Hispaniola. And that is the probably uh, what we're talking about here with the wave train scenario. Now the GFS completely ignores this and doesn't have this at all. Uh, logic would tell you that this is the peak of the season and we're, we are likely to be tracking at least another low behind this one. I'm not sure it's going to look exactly like this, but it would follow similar steering, steering dynamics across the Atlantic. We would just have to see where we end up with that high pressure that's building across the center and, and the Texas area as far as which how that would steer this with that ridge. And that's not this Saturday, that's next Saturday. Just so you, because right. you probably see the Saturday mm -hmm. on top. That's a whole week and a half away from, from now. Week three of the NFL season, not <laughs> week two yeah, for yeah, our football yeah, yeah. fans watching. And a lot there. can and will change between now and then. Absolutely. In the NFL schedule and, of course, with the right. topics. <laughs> uh, let's, let's ask this question. I want to ask the three of you a, a question, because we are talking about uh, the words uh, strange, bizarre, um, unexpected have been used to describe this year's hurricane season. On a scale of 1 to 10, Jeff, Rebecca, Scott, how strange and unexpected has this season actually been so far? Well, I thought you were going to say how strange are you, and I was about to say, well, I'm pretty <laughs> well, bizarre. I am 11. very weird. <laughs> ten. Well, I thought I would, I, right? I, well, I can vouch for JB. Yeah, definitely a 10 on him. Uh, <laughs> looking at name storms, because this is bizarre, right? And But it's bizarre mostly because it's been so crazy you know, insanely active the past couple of years. In 2020, by now, we had 20 named storms. 2021, last year, we had 14. We only have five. Now we're six. So today is, today is actually, wait a second. Yes, today is six. Six named storms, not depressions, if you will. And then the average is, is eight. So we're actually close to average here in terms of the number of storms. We do have to change that graphic at some point. But, um, but, but we're way behind where we've been the past couple of years. So up until yesterday, we, we only had five named storms for the season. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really weird and really bizarre. And I think it's, it's, there, there are many theories, but I don't think any of the hurricane experts know exactly why. Honestly, I, I follow a lot of, I would say, the most brilliant tropical minds out there. And although everyone has kind of an idea of what may be happening, some of the factors... Uh, we, we, we obviously know it's wind shear and dry air, but what is causing this overall hostile environment this year? Scott, do you do you have any uh, any idea? You know, just along those those same lines, you know, we've, we've been seeing this the wind shear and that dry air all season long. But but why it's there, that really is is an unknown at this point. Uh, top minds are, are definitely working on that and hopefully we'll, we'll get some answers to help uh, build that into future seasons forecasts. But so far, I give this uh, as far as on the strange level, a seven or an eight. But even though it has been so quiet, you know, we never ever want to let our guard down, even though it's been quiet. The U.S. has been quiet. Nothing has been developing uh, nearby, really. Uh, but you can see those uh, development regions there most likely as we had in September in the, the Atlantic region is where we do look for storms, but it only takes one storm 
for it to be a bad hurricane season for one location or many locations. So if you're along the east coast of the U.S., along Georgia or South Carolina, where I am, the Gulf Coast, the Florida Atlantic Coast, definitely don't let your guard down because it can change in an instant with it being a bad season for you. So keep that hurricane gear ready and keep that plan ready to go almost at a moment's notice. So, Rebecca, your your number one to 10 on how strange of a season this has been so far. And so I'm going to go six, because when you look back, we are pretty close to average and we have had years like this. I think what makes it most strange for me is that we did not expect it but based on the La Nina weather pattern. We expected it to be above average, just like the past couple of years have been. But if you think back to 2013, if you think back to the early 2010s, it, it really got quiet there for a couple of years with only a weak tropical depression sweeping by or a weak tropical storm make, being a big rainmaker for us and so i'm just really enjoying it it's my favorite season that we've had so far it's pretty quiet uh, but it is a lot closer to average than the last couple of years so that's why i'm going six so other numbers jeff did you want to throw a number our, our uh, way for i the think purpose for of the me game? for me it's like an eight I mean, or or you know yeah in strangeness an eight or a nine just because you know we we did the stats at the early part of the season i don't know if you remember jb we talked about the difference between el nino years and la nina years during la nina years we see three times the number of hurricanes traditionally than we see during El Nino. So La Nina's are typically hyperactive seasons. And for this to be not just not hyperactive, but up until a week ago, we only had like five to 6% of the accumulated cyclone energy uh, of the uh, for the season. Then about a week and a half ago, we had a couple of storms and now it's up to like 60 or 70%. But you know, we were just way, 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 way behind. Scott, do you want to throw a number away before we move on to the next question? Yeah, I, I would go with about an eight or so just because of how how abnormal it is compared to what the preseason forecasts were because of the conditions with the above normal water temperatures. All the ingredients were there and originally for us to have that hyperactive season, just like what we have dealing with the past couple of years in a row. So definitely strange in that sense. But Rebecca, to point out, maybe not so strange since we are just uh, just – getting close to an average normal year for us so far in the Atlantic, just compared to where we were expecting to be. And Rebecca's showing the the cool water in the Pacific uh, near the equator, indicating the La Nina. And a very weird, and we talked about this last week, a very weird temperature distribution in the Atlantic. The, the tropical Atlantic is actually very warm. It's it's the sixth warmest since like 1982 or something like that. But it's the North Atlantic, uh, which is incredibly warm, a big marine heat wave going on there. And you know the marine the presence of that marine heat wave is definitely you know toying with stuff in the atlantic no doubt the last two hurricanes the only two hurricanes we've seen this season have been way up north and they've been able to feed off some of that warmer water but when you when you talk about temperature distributions in the ocean that does impact where storms form uh and but there's something bigger going on here that is causing these high latitude marine heat waves it's not just the atlantic there's one in the pacific too um, so it's La Nina and the way it's interacting with, it's a very, it's, it's convoluted. Oh, and by the way, I saw an expert on, on Twitter today talking about how the temperature contrast in the Atlantic this, uh, this season is the, the lowest it has ever been on record. So the contrast between how cool it is near the poles, not cool at all, and how warm it is in the tropics. Well, that goes along with what you're seeing on the, you know, on the map here of the really warm water in the North Atlantic. So with less of a temperature contrast there, it uh, ends up being through you know various meteorological reasons less favorable for 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 systems uh, tropical systems in the atlantic ocean but again you know at, part of that believe it or not has to do with climate change and part of it has to do with la nina but you know it gets really really complicated so complicated that i think my my brain i'm losing brain cells even talking about it right now <laughs> really it, it is really cutting edge stuff and really i want to make sure that stuff. i haven't lost yeah. too many brain cells when uh -huh. i ask this question when we're talking here about very warm versus warm and we don't know audience, how warm it is i forgot we, to check <laughs> well i know i know that i know that but but when are we saying that the waters that are in off the Atlantic, or excuse me, in the Northern Atlantic, are warmer than what we have in the Gulf? No, these are based on averages. These are the anomalies. So departure, right. the, the it says on the top, departure from normal. So it's just 10 to 15 degrees above normal in the North Atlantic right now. That's really, really, really warm. So these are just whether it's below normal or above normal. So we see the blue, that's slightly cooler than normal by like a degree. Right. We see the really deep shades of red, that's as much as 10 to 15 degrees above normal. So the, but basically the whole Atlantic is above normal right now, but the, but the relative part, the northern northern Atlantic is the warmest, relatively speaking. 
joy with this question, hashtag KJB, but making it very clear, it's for Jeff or Rebecca. What are the chances of the West Palm Beach area getting any storms, getting this storm or any effects uh, from it? You want to take this one, Rebecca? Rebecca. Sure. Um, it doesn't look like it would be likely. It looks like the scenarios are either the system remains weak and drifts off towards the west, or it catches that ridge that we talked about and makes the turn into the Atlantic. And so that would be the other option. But there's really not a lot that shows that we may see this headed towards the West Palm Beach area. So something would have to change pretty drastically with the steering flows and what and the factors that we're considering for it to drive the storm either to the north or let it drift off towards the west but not a lot for west palm certainly not a direct hit scenario that you would need to be worried about i would think the worst you might see from west palm if something changed drastically and we it did head your way would be some rain let's end out on this we haven't mentioned this name uh, so far or i think maybe you did jeff maybe briefly but fiona we fiona. haven't talked about the yeah. sixth name on our list mm -hmm. for the year uh of course we've had alex bonnie colin danielle earl and fiona is on deck um scott what, what do you think based on the models you think that this in all likelihood does in fact become our sixth name storm of the season yeah it's not going to take much for it to to do a little bit of intensification but i don't see it you know, certainly being a, a situation where it goes through rapid intensification or anything like that, because it only needs to increase the wind speeds by uh, 10 miles per hour or so uh, for it to really get into that range, or I should say uh, about five miles per hour, it's uh, sustained at 35. Uh, so it's not going to take much, but I, I don't see it long term once it gets beyond Friday or so to, uh, being significantly uh, different from, uh, from that, getting to 45 miles per hour or so uh, with the islands and everything. So yeah, it's going to, I think it's going to make it, but it's it's not going to be long lived as Fiona at this point. And real quick, Jeff, Rebecca, the chances of this becoming a cat one hurricane reaching that hurricane status. I think it's going to take, it's going to take it to make that right hook out north. So it's going to happen after that. If it doesn't weaken to a depression when it's over or just to an open wave, or if it moves west into the Gulf, it'll have to, you know, it'll be, it'll, let's put it this way. It's not going to happen in five days. It's right. going to be seven, eight days if it happens at all. And one more thing I should mention, I was, I, I don't know where I left my brain at home or something like that. We've only had five named storms. The graphic was correct. I was looking at it thinking we hadn't updated, but the truth is we haven't gotten to Fiona yet. Right. So it yeah. will be wrong later today, but it's still correct now. <laughs> and we'll, of course, we'll, we'll keep you posted, folks, on whether or not we do get this upgraded. And just to make sure, it, it potential tropical cyclone is below tropical depression, correct? So yes. the next stage for this, as far as an increase in strength, we're talking about Fiona. Right. So, folks, for our uh, wherever you're watching from, you can click on the link in the description on this video if you're joining us on Facebook Live, or you can go to trackingthetropics.tv for all of our models, all the very latest updates that we get on all the storms that we track in the Atlantic over the course of the uh, of course, the Atlantic hurricane season and tracking the tropics is live Wednesdays, two o'clock Eastern, one o'clock Central on whatever app, website or social media platform that you're watching on. It includes next star meteorologists from across the country, including our featured meteorologist today. Scott Roberts, final word is yours, Scott. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, tropical Depression 7, soon be Fiona, not anything serious for us to worry about just yet, but, you know, just want to say it again, it only takes one storm for it to be bad, and we still have a long way to go in the hurricane season, so definitely stay tuned and stay weather aware and uh, abreast of what's going on in the tropics all season long. Scott, a, a tracking the tropics veteran at this point, having joined on us, joined many uh, episodes over the yes. years. Scott, thanks so much for joining us, and wherever you're watching from, thank you a lot uh, for where... Again, we're live on a lot of different platforms at the moment, but we will be live again on this platform should we have coverage that you need to have in the palm of your hand. So uh, keep it locked to wherever you're watching Tracking the Tropics, of course, powered by Handyman Roofing. For Jeff, Rebecca, and Scott, I'm JB. We'll see you next time, folks, and stay safe out there. Be well. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.